back again by popular demand. Yes. And we're pleased to have him with us this evening. Uh, it's a great educational uh, evening to have Fred critique our work. I, I don't think we, he really needs an introduction to anyone who lives here in Medina. We all know him very well and respect and admire his work. And he's a great teacher. And hopefully we'll all learn something from him tonight. So without any other hesitation, let's get started. Thank you, Sharon. It's uh, great to be here this evening, and I see a lot of familiar faces, and uh, in fact, quite a few that I re recognized from last uh, year's critique and so forth. Uh, but for the benefit of those that don't remember uh, what I'm really looking for, and also for those newcomers, I'm going to give you just a little bit of a run through as to what I really look for. That way I don't have to go through and repeat it uh, endlessly for each uh, particular piece. Uh, first of all, when I uh, go into a show and, and juror a show and so forth, I'm going to perhaps look for something a little different than what I'm looking for tonight. Uh, in fact, I think that uh, uh, Homer had indicated to you that it would be wise to bring some works and such that were in the progress of being completed. And uh, so therefore, the way I look at those might be a little different than show pieces. And also at the same time, uh, everyone's intent is entirely different. So as an example, perhaps you went out and were doing a particular piece for uh, a commission and, uh, or a, a form of illustration as such. And in that event, perhaps I'm going to have to uh, make adjustments as far as my, my critique. Uh, you will probably remember the best of show. And even uh, if you totally disagreed with it, you're going to remember it. And, of course, then uh, there are a few pieces that you're going to say, well, I wonder how in the world that ever got into that show. You're going to remember it. Mm -hmm. So no matter how you look at it, they gave you impact, and that has to say something for it right there. In fact, oftentimes when I walk into juror show, I can usually pick out the very first, second, and third place or best of show as soon as I walk in uh, because they're the ones that give you the strongest impact. Okay, and we're going to start off, looks like, with Bob's. Uh, he has two particular uh, pieces of work up here. And uh, I remember his last uh, uh, critique and so forth. And I think that he's made major headway with both particular pieces since uh, last year's critique and so forth. I do like the fact that he is simplifying. Uh, in fact, both pieces are far more s simplified than I think what we were looking at last year. Uh, my favorite of the bunch is the one on the right. And I'll try to shed more light on, on that later. But I'm going to start with the one on the left. And because that's the easiest thing for me to, to uh, see a few little adjustments that need to be uh, made on that. Uh, I feel that his technique, and of course we already talked a little bit about that, the technique of working with a very detailed brush stroking works very nicely. And I feel that oftentimes a person loves to go, sometimes go into a tremendous amount of detail and puts major emphasis on that and gets so carried away with that that the rest of the painting doesn't hold together. I'm going to start with the uh, snow area right above the uh, wolf's head. Right in through here, this is called a tangent. And that tangent is where it's almost like he's wearing a hat and because it fits snug right over top of that and it causes, it causes a distraction because of that. And there's some other little things about that, but we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, what I like best about the entire painting is what he has from right here. In other words, let me get a, a cropper and perhaps you can see what I'm talking about. Yes. Everything there works beautifully. In fact, I don't, other than the right up in through here. The, the only consideration I would have on that, Bob, I feel that that's a very outstanding piece, extremely outstanding. The only thought I have is a very similar uh, critique to what I, I gave you on this with the whites. And that is right down here. I feel that that is a little strong because that's the strongest white and the strongest dark that's coming together. And if you could kind of have a lost and found uh, pattern down there where it's not going to be as strong of a contrast 
it almost vibrates so strong that it takes away from up here. And it could be such a subtle little shadow wash. It could be a shadow wash from a tree. It could be a shadow wash from the, the wolves or whatever. Or it could be just anything imaginary. Uh, you have done it in many instances. Look at the contrast that you have in through here, and you've lost the contrast in through here. It's just right down in through here that that's, that's the only area that just needs to be a little uh, less uh, in contrast. I have to applaud you on such two beautiful pieces of work here. And by the way, if anyone has any further questions that you want to throw at me about any particular piece, whether it be the person that uh, completed it or not, feel free to do that. Okay. Bill? I've seen, fortunately, I've seen uh, Bill's growth and development in the last year, and I have seen more uh, willingness to, to move forward than uh, most people I've ever encountered. And I have to applaud you on, on doing just that. I think that uh, I like the way that you look for a subject and, and put it together, and um, you're very creative with your thoughts and so forth. Uh, and of course, the, the ability to handle the media is, is noteworthy there. I like the fact that you are able to come up with such subtle value ranges, such as what you have done with the uh, shadows back here, and building up the, the harnessing and so forth in the front, and getting that beautiful sense of, of uh, depth there. Uh, I also like the way that you're able to achieve uh, the contours of the way the shadows and of course back there I don't think that you can appreciate it as much as I can up close but I can see how these contours lay over top of the structure and add such a, a dimension it's even right here such as right there and of course you're gonna have to see these up close you're gonna see it here how it staggers how these different contours go up down up down on these different pieces so oftentimes people will put a shadow wash on something and never think twice about all these different layers and, and levels and so forth and because of this I like it just as I had finished talking with Bob, I said, project a shadow coming down from another pine bough, but of course we're not near pine boughs and so forth, so therefore all you have to do is say there's a beam or something, and it's gonna be projecting a shadow that might be running across here, coming here, staggering over top of this, somehow putting that up, and or just go ahead and crop it accordingly. Uh, something like this will be much stronger and of course look how far we're coming in on that we're coming in almost uh, three inches on the left hand side uh, quite a bit on the top about three inches from the top and so on down around but it's a negative space that surrounds it that is causing it to uh, it's actually taken away from the subject itself Okay, this is George. Where's George here? So I can kind of direct my eyes towards you there. All right, George, your references are from where now? So I know where you, your references are coming from. Uh huh. Okay. And this one over here is the newspaper one on the right, and this one is the on your travels. Do you have one of the digitals on for your VCR? where you can put that on still mode still mode, and, and keep that on there, that's nice. Okay, uh, that's a nice way of working sometimes. Uh, if I were to say which one is uh, my favorite of the bunch, I would say the one on the right is my uh, favorite of the two. And uh, what I like best about that are the way the shadows play such an important role in making up this composition. You look at the pattern of those shadows, and it becomes very abstract. In fact, if you would go ahead and just map that as an example, right there, I'm not suggesting that be the case. But I mean, really, if you look at that, and in fact, if we had done it this way, where perhaps people can't identify with it as easily, and you still came in and cropped it like this, what a beautiful painting, it really is. It's uh, subtle light and dark so many times people feel you have to come in with the strongest darks 
I mean, really strong shadow contrast and such. And uh, not so. And I like the lost and found, and it's happening here and it's happening over here. And I'll probably be talking about a lot of lost and found edges and such, because I feel that's another uh, area that a lot of us, uh, well, Bob did a real nice job. If you remember how that wolf kind of just disappeared, uh, just got lost in the backdrop. That's a lost area. And uh, then other times it comes back in, and you have to know when to, when to have it really strong contrast and so forth. Here, this is nicely done over in three here, nicely modeled. Can you imagine if that contrast went all the way around the outside perimeter like that? You'd lose it. Your eye, would, it would almost look like it was cut out, pasted on. And so that's what makes this, is are these beautiful lost and found areas. This one here is a different painting than what we have over there. And the reason why I, there are certain parts that I do like over here, very much so. And here's another example. And here, we don't have the contrast. Here, it's very little contrast. And here, we have a great amount of contrast. That is what you do so nicely, of knowing when to do that and when not to do that. And so that I have to applaud you on this. This looks a little more labored. And uh, I feel that there are areas here that could be lost a little more, such as this line here really isn't necessary. That line almost divides your painting in, in a, a half situation coming right on across this way no matter how you do it so i would lose this and all you have to do is the same principles what you've done back in through here it's just a matter of washing this down and uh, maybe as you wash this down even carry that pattern on across here so taking from here and making this darker could be a shadow again from who knows where but making this a little darker and making all of this darker and possibly even a little bit of the few little edges so that this isn't as strong of a contrast. We don't want our eye over here, I don't think. I don't think that's really where you want it to be. And I think by coming in darker through here, it's gonna pull your eye in this particular part of the painting. Where's Linda's hiding? I didn't even see Linda yet. Okay. Do you want to explain what you have here, Linda, so well, that that way we all can appreciate what you... Okay, what, what it is, is it's a, it's a double picture in the respect that my husband wanted me to do the picture, <laughs> and then I wanted to enter it in the colored pencil show that they're having this year. So I thought, I couldn't just do the picture of the photo, I didn't feel, and make it artistic enough to just put it in as a piece. So I wanted to have something that would make it, you know, look like a photo, that you're looking at a photo album at it. Okay? And so that's, that's what that's all about. Okay. So the whole thing is colored pencil, though? Right. Both okay. Pieces, both pieces are colored pencil. Okay. And your reference was an old-time photo, was this on this? Right. So okay. I wanted to keep it in the sepia. Yeah. I didn't want to do it in the color. Right. And take away from that kind of a... Okay. Uh, I like uh, your interpretation and so forth. Of course, your, your handling is exquisite. There's no denying that. You definitely have a, a beautiful feel for uh, how to build up... Uh, uh, different layers and so forth with that colored pencil and working with both monochromatic and and uh, full color spectrum and so forth uh, actually I enjoy both of them I don't have a particular favorite I um, I'm very partial to even in my photographs I enjoy the sepia the, the black and white uh, the, because you're talking about simplicity and so forth and that adds such impact because of that and uh, and yet, at the same time, I, th I feel that uh, what you're doing over here with your colored pencil uh, really shows how flexible uh, and versatile you can be. So I have to applaud you in that, in that uh, general direction. I, uh, I really enjoy the patterns of the sky, the flowing movement, uh, the distance, uh, the depth, uh, the reflective colors. Uh, all these different transitions that are taking place in such a, a simple landscape, and yet you've made it uh, far more simple 
than what uh, meets the eye. But at the same time, you're able to quickly digest the entire composition uh, very effectively. And I think that that's, again, goes back to what I just got done saying, how oftentimes people like to go into detail and work pieces and parts and not worrying about how the whole painting is coming together. Okay, Mary. Very nice, Mary. Boy, it's nice to see all these different approaches and so forth. Uh, it's, this is what makes art so interesting. And it makes it also very difficult to sometimes understand uh, how art really works. I, I enjoy the one on the left. Uh, that's my favorite out of the two. If I were to say which one would I submit into a show or whatever, I'd go to the one on the left. I, uh, I have a lot of feeling for that particular one. I, I feel that, uh, the, again, goes back to the handling of the media. I like the design, the composition. I like the, the almost the abstract, uh, abstractness that you get from it. Uh, you're able to appreciate realism and abstract uh, type of uh, pursuits and such that she has here and, and in fact look at it again I'm going to crop this just like uh, what I did before but if we had cropped it right here and then again submitted it like this no one in the right mind would ever know what that is see and so when I look at a painting whether it be realistic whether it be the harnessing or whether it be uh, arches or whether it be a, a landscape or whatever it would be, I look at it in a very abstract manner. I look at the shapes and how those shapes all come together. And this definitely uh, illustrates that very much. The only shape that I don't particularly enjoy is the shape that's coming right down here, all the way across. Everything is staggered, giving me that distance and depth. Look at how this staggering happens. Look at this overlap look. It's only right through here. And if this just had, this is a tangent, so to speak, same concept, where this comes right on down here and it lines right on up with the lower level too. So this, this direction and the upper direction cause a little bit of a problem. So it just would be a matter of offsetting that. Now, how would you offset it? Well, one is that you say, gee, that means I'm gonna have to start all over again. No, you wouldn't. Actually, it's a, such a simple little uh, device the ear eye would not go all the way across there if you would just stop and maybe put another shape in right through here. Your eye will, in fact, let me just put my hand here and look at it now and look at it here. So if you just came in with another shape, that would help all together. Compositionally, it's not bad, except again, I don't know if I would put that silo right there in the middle. I don't feel that that's necessarily the best spot. It's such a, an open shape. Had that shape been broken up with another shape in front, had there been another building in front of that, it wouldn't have been as strong of a uh, statement as you have. Because of the fact you don't have anything else in front of it to break up that shape, because of the placement of that, it's causing a little bit of a problem there for you. Again, I can see the painterliness that you're able to achieve in that, and I feel that uh, that, again, is a very commendable uh, point in that particular piece as well, just like the first one. Uh, I feel that the trees that you have back and through here, even though I do like this area here, this back here could probably be played down just a little further. I feel that the, the detail, uh, as far as the color, the, the busyness and so forth, actually takes away from what you want, where you, where you want your eye to travel to. I like the pattern that you've got going in here. Notice how your eye goes. It goes like this, comes in, and comes out back into the painting. It now goes over here and back up this way. So it gives you a tremendous amount of, of uh, design. And, uh, but I would play up on those designs. And I would also play down on that particular shape. OK, I think that's about it, unless somebody else has some more comments on it. We're going to break, what, in about another, so I know how to gear my, about uh, 15 minutes? Okay. 
It's uh, unfortunately very small for you people to see from a distance here, but uh, I, at least I have the uh, pleasure of being up close and being able to appreciate it this way. Uh, out of the, actually you've got, to, I'm torn between which one I would uh, move towards. I would say my favorite is the one on the right, and I'll try to expound on that in a little bit, because I think that the, we've opened up another door here uh, that now I can start talking about another direction, something we haven't hit on yet. Uh, although we did do it with uh, a little bit of bills, we talked uh, lightly on, on the way he vignetted the uh, harnessing and that backdrop and such. And that, to me, is what makes this particular piece so strong. Uh, I'm going to bring this up just a little closer for the benefit of the group here. But notice the way that she has left the outside perimeter almost void and how she has really played up the center of interest and how she's able to draw the viewer to that particular area. And I feel that when a person is able to design uh, in this manner, they have a lot going for themselves in regards to understanding the elements of design uh, and how you are actually able to get to the uh, center of interest by leaving the voidness, by leaving the whites. And that's essentially what we've done here. And that's basically a vignette. And, and uh, that's what makes this particular piece as strong as it is. It's fresh. It's uh, exciting because of design. The uh, color harmony is also very nice. And more so here, in other words, if I were, here's the same color type situation. It's, in fact, it's exactly the same color scheme. But for some reason, as you look at this particular piece here, your eye goes right here because of how she's been able to play up those particular colors and play down the outside perimeter, you know right away where your eye is traveling to. Here, it's fortunately, I still feel that this becomes the focal point right in here, but I do feel that it's not as strong of a statement there. It's, again, the simplicity of this piece over here that makes it as strong as it is. <coughs> this Jen's. Okay, Jen. My favorite, of course, I realize you're not done with either one. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry, you're probably done with the one on the left, but uh, not done with the one on the right. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but I'm going to give you a critique on a few little things on both of them. And uh, my favorite is the one on the left. And the reason for that is not because of subject matter, uh, but I would have to say because of uh, two things, the way you handle the media and because of the way it's composed. And I think that uh, both those are uh, very important parts. All right, just a few little suggestions on the one on the left here first. Very, very minor. You've got some nice little pieces of growth coming up the fenceway here. You stopped it right here at this uh, point. It wouldn't hurt to let this one grow just a little further. Not in all instances, but just gives you a little more overlap. That's minor. Uh, I like the tearing effect, the overlapping. I see, the again, the, the shadows on the snow, right, for instance, for, uh, from uh, the uh, wood itself and how it's projecting a contour on that little piece of snow. I would like to see further shadows. And as subtle as you possibly can be, you've done it all the way through taking you back into the composition this way. And the reason why is that you've kind of gotten this pattern all the way through, and even here, it wouldn't hurt at all to kind of let something come up, down, lost, come up, down, get lost in a few little spots to help take you into the composition. It's going to give you a tremendous amount of, of depth by taking you in here with some shadows. Now, I've mentioned shadows three or four times already in this critique, and I do feel uh, shadows are almost icing on the cake in many, many instances. Uh, shadows not only coming across here, but a few little light, subtle shadows coming across, even though they weren't there necessarily, but a tree nearby is going to be projecting or casting its shadows across the top perimeter of the uh, snow bank area here. And just, it's going to, again, give you that much more distance and depth. The one on the right over here with your figures, it's uh, totally different 
a totally different approach, a totally different feeling, totally different subject than what you have on the left here. And uh, I like the willingness to explore new directions and such. And I feel that's uh, commendable for you in that respect. I do feel that the, there's a couple things I would have suggested. If, if you were to say, let's start again. And in fact, that's what I would do, not to say discourage you for, by saying, okay, let's continue on with this. I would try for the amount of time that you've put into this, I would say, uh, if you put that same amount of time into it, you'd be done with the, the next endeavor and uh, uh, you'd still be trying to pull this together with that same amount of time that you'd put into this one. So I would start with more of an underglaze to achieve some interesting colors like what you've done right through here. And it seems like you're, you're, this goes back to like pieces and parts. You're trying to, to paint this piece and then that part and hopefully they're all gonna come together. You've isolated blue, dark uh, backdrop, gray, and then your skin colors over here, and you need to start saying, okay, let's get some of these colors coming together. And that's why I suggest maybe an underglaze to start with. And an underglaze would be a matter of just abstractly putting your washes on, letting them run all over the place, and then come back and then do your negative painting or your pa paint positive, it doesn't matter, or a combination of both over top of that. Now, I don't mean to lose all your whites at the same time as you well know on the underglaze, but I think that would help give a little more harmony to this piece right off the bat because you're starting to, to work with it in a very abstract manner. I brought a couple pieces, uh, examples to, to show underglazing with me. I don't want to take the time in the critique now, but for those people that don't understand the underglazing uh, process and such, I'll have a couple of those things displayed that uh, at break time you'll be able to see what we're talking about. But uh, that would probably be the, uh, the crux of it there. The last little thought I'm going to give you is think about the outside perimeter. This shape is not going to help you with this. Design-wise, you have to think, if you're going to show that shape, let that shape be a very important part. Right now it's not working for you. And so I would say either crop into it or redesign that shape. <coughs> Okay, Kathy, this is going to be what on the left here? I realize you don't have the availability of my darks and lights. Um, there's a barn at the top right-hand corner, and it intersects with the tree that comes down. It kind of makes a seven. I didn't know if that was going to be a problem or not, but it kind of tends to bring your eye down towards the rock and then with the subject. But again, it's that intersection that I'm kind of concerned about. Okay. I really enjoy the one on the right, too, by the way. Uh, and from here, I sometimes, and I, th I think that's oftentimes why we stand back from a painting to really digest it. Uh, the first thing that hits me, and in fact, it might be the only thing I'm going to give you a suggestion on, because I really feel that you've really done a beautiful job on that. I feel... The wallpaper that you've done in there, as detailed as it is, as intricate as it is, it's, and how important it is uh, to the overall composition, it's played down in such a manner that it doesn't take away from the cat. Uh, the overall arrangement, uh, can you imagine that painting without that shadow again? Talking about shadows. I mean, you take away uh, shadows in a painting and you've taken away so much life and excitement. and. Uh, so I feel that everything in that piece is superb except for only one thing. And it, it hit me just like that when I first looked at it. And the only thing would be if you could eliminate that white, that strong of a white, because that's such a shape that's coming straight up and down. And all you'd have to do is slightly hit a little bit of it right in through here and a touch right there and a touch up here. just. So it's going to be a little bit of a gradated light and dark pattern in there. And uh, as strong of a white that you have here, as strong as you have here, as strong as that, those aren't problems. It's just this one shape right through here. To me, that's, that's the only problem that I see in the whole painting. Okay, I think we'll take our break now. And um, as I had mentioned 
earlier, I said that I brought a few examples of underglazes. I also brought an, another thing that I thought might be of interest. It was just a quick little rendering, so it's nothing major. Um, but it was for the purpose of showing my students um, how you can work with a variety of different medias using the same subject matter, and yet you still have to deal with the same elements of design. And so I'll put that up so that way you can get a feel for what I'm talking about in regards to, because I knew when I came here we'd be talking about oil paintings, acrylics, colored pencil, uh, watercolor, and so on down the way. And yet it doesn't really matter the media. Uh, and yet I am a watercolor, so I enjoy watercolor painting, but uh, at the same time, I, the same things I deal with in watercolor, I, you have to deal with in pen and ink and so on down the way. So I, I'll have that on display here. You can take a look at that too uh, during our short little break. How much time do we have here, Homer? Eight minute break, okay. <laughs> Uh, last chance to get your act together and we'll continue our critique. We have about 40 minutes to finish quite a few paintings. So, and I, I don't want to leave anyone out in the cold here. Okay, this is Aaron's. Where is Aaron? Aaron's uh, not around, huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. Aaron, we have to start. If, if you say you're an amateur, we all start someplace. And uh, I started exactly the same place that you started, and others all started that way too. So I have to commend you for being here and saying, I want to be here to learn as much as I possibly can and absorb as much as you possibly can. And uh, so I had to applaud you on that. Actually, you've done a beautiful job for taking into consideration uh, your beginning stages. I can see a little bit of, uh, uh, I, I recognize that, that you were uh, somewhat at a beginning stage. Uh, but I can see a lot of chance for growth because I can see how you are aware of a lot of things that uh, we as artists should be in tune to. Uh, one, some of the different things would be, I like the way that you're able to actually get a tremendous amount of foreshortening in through this particular piece. In other words, the water, oftentimes, w looking at this type of water area here, people have a tendency of making it look very flat. What you've done there, flat, or here, is not the case here. Now that, this becomes a little more of an abstract painting. And because of that, you can get away with this flat shape, so to speak, and not so here. So here, you're able to achieve that through uh, reflections that are going with the contours and such, laying that water down nice and flat. So that's very commendable. Here, you have a little bit of a tangent, and that's where this line, or the shoreline runs right up in line with the pine tree, and that caused a little bit of a problem, so if you would bring that shoreline over this way and maybe back or coming all the way over and I'm not sure somehow meandering it a number of different ways but right now you cannot just let it come up through this way. I also can see an awareness as far as playing down the distant trees coming up closer and getting a little darker but at the same time you, you could also raise the trees that you have here in the front to overlap a few of the backgrounds. So you almost started doing that right here. But if you'd carry those trees up just a little further, you get a feeling of overlap. Anytime you get one thing over top of another, you add that dimension, such as which hand is the furthest one away. Now, it's just because all of a sudden I touch one this way, you can see very quickly which way it's supposed to be. So take advantage of that. You did it here, you did it here, you did it back in through here, and this is the only area that you didn't do it, and that would, again, give you a little more distance and depth. The green. Greens are difficult to work with. And uh, they're, they're a wonderful color if you get the right choice of colors. And so I'm gonna give you just a few little thoughts about green. When you go at home, you take that green that you use right there and throw a little bit of orange 
whatever orange you want to work with. A cadmium orange, uh, chrome orange, anything. I don't know your colors and such that you're working with, your brands and so forth, but throw a little bit of that into it. Throw a little bit of uh, burnt sienna in it. Uh, throw a little blue in it, whether it be a cobalt blue, whether it be a French ultramarine, whether, whatever it would be. Try to work with different mixtures. I feel that you're using too much green right from the tube itself, too raw. I can see different changes. You've intermixed some, but it's, it's almost coming across too, too strong of a, uh, a particular color. So I like the originality and concept of this. Uh, and I like the design. I, I think it's a very simple design. I do feel it's almost going back to the same thing I talked about with Linda. Uh, perhaps everything is distorted with different directions. Had this been distorted just a little bit, might have also uh, increased uh, the harmony of this particular shape with everything else. And again, the same thing as I talked about over here, intermixing color, instead of having just a purple chair uh, with a sienna, chair over here and a white chair here and a yellow chair or background drop here. Here you came back in and you started repeating a lot of these other colors such as I see the sienna, I see the yellow, I see all these different colors coming together in here and that helps pull it together. But at the same time, why not put a little bit of the sienna over in here? Why not take a little bit of the violet and put it over here? So again, harmonizing the painting in that fashion. Uh, I like the design. This is what makes it. This whole painting is a very strong piece. I am going to crop that because you had to get your money's worth. <laughs> and I would say, again, it's the same thing we did with Bill's uh, little uh, piece at the top. Your eye isn't going to travel up and around it. Just cropping this section off is going to put the emphasis here. Look at the design here as far as the positive and negative space. So I think that uh, that's my favorite out of the two. Okay, Dottie, where is Dottie? Okay. Dottie, I like your subject, and uh, I like the way you handled it. I feel that, uh, again, you're working with transparent watercolor, and you're using it in a very transparent manner. I like your color harmony. I like the way that you've arranged uh, the uh, different colors and such. To all work. I like the composition and the way that you travel in and out and around. Uh, I'm not sure if you're necessarily done with this. I assume you are because I see a signature down there. And so therefore I'm going to give you um, a food or a little bit of advice, uh, food for thought. And uh, the only thing on this is I feel that sometimes I have to sometimes uh, make a judgment and say, does is it worth going into or not? And sometimes by jumping back into a painting and trying to make these necessary corrections, it uh, works against a person because the fact it's hard to get back into the same mode. Uh, but I do feel that this would be noteworthy for you to try to do it. Even though you've signed your name, I do feel that it's such a minor little adjustment that you need to do to a few of these things that I think it would be worth your time in doing them. Uh, you're working with what we call shapes. Everything is a shape. And these shapes are being defined by values. And if you look at it, let me take you through these values. We have a medium, we have a dark. We have back to a light, to a medium, to a little back to a medium, to a lighter. And then it's, it's light in through here, and then it's lighter, and then it's dark, then it's light, dark. Everything you have is established by light and dark patterns. You've changed the colors, yes. You have greens, you have reds, and so on. But everything is by value. Now, the, one of the best ways of doing this would be to take and put this under uh, a black and white Xerox uh, or a copier and look at it in black and white form. And what's going to happen is that you're going to see all of a sudden these lines are these lines are going to look like worms, and they're going to stand out. They're going to come forward. And right now, to me, this area right here, the structural part, is this going to be like a basket type thing, or what do you have here? Uh, it's, all right, so, all right, so sometimes I have to be back where you guys are to see it. I'm up so close I can't see. But the straw hat causes a tendency of, even then you say the straw hat, whether it be a hat or a basket, either way, you're talking about a weave 
that has to have the same things that these happen here. And so therefore you say, these are linear lines, these would be light and dark edges, and it's not the case. What you would need to do is establish a stronger light and dark pattern, and one way of doing that is to get a gradation of values such as darkening this side here and letting this side get lighter. At the same time, darken some of these lines and let them get lighter as it comes down so you really get an edge. Let me explain that right here. We have Morse code, and all you'd have to do is slightly And this is a little difficult to do with this pen. Tone this side down and get rid of the linear lines that you're going through there and establish a value in there. And then project some shadows. You've done it here, you've done it here. And you can even pick up, and you've seen this is an interior uh, type of setup where you can get double shadows. Uh, you have more than one light source established. And if that be the case, you can project another shadow back on the hat itself from the object itself. Who says it's just a one light situation? And uh, so you can go ahead and, again, just for the sake of composition, tie this together with some shadows at the same time. That's very nice. Got it? I didn't realize it was this. <coughs> this is Bobby's. We're okay. All right, let's make sure it is. Which way? This way? I'm glad you pointed that out. <laughs> this way? <laughs> okay. Okay, um, I like the design. I think that the, the uh, fact that you're actually cropping in on your image as close as you have, you're really putting major emphasis on the design elements. I think if you had gone any further back, you would have started going to the outside perimeter and thinking about just the structural aspect of what the figure is, and rather than looking further into it and saying, what are the design elements that make up this particular figure? This shape against that shape, this large shape against the small shape, this dark shape against the light shape, so on. The only thought I have is this area right here. I feel this area right here isn't where it should be. I personally feel if you'd go darker all the way to the outside area, look where your eye is going to go right now. Right now, it's taking you to the shape. Right now, this shape is causing more problems than any. Everything else is working very nicely. Even this shape is not that uh, harmful. And even though this shape is almost very similar to this, that those are the only two that are really a little bit of a problem, that uh, everything else is a nice gradation. And in other words, you look at this shape right in through here, it's a soft gradation leading you into here. It's a soft gradation in through here. The same thing in through here. And it's this, just this shape right there that is causing you a problem more than anything. Uh, last would be the white and light that you have here, I would like to see softened. In other words, just lightly play this value down, or the, the light, increase it by maybe one or two values. And so therefore, you're not gonna have as strong a white leading you all the way up. This white in here will be the strongest white, not here. This, to me, is almost too strong. So play this down, play this down up in through here. You'll have a whole different drawing altogether. Very, very nicely done. And this goes back to what I was talking, I think it was Mary. And so that you don't feel like the Lone Ranger Here's another person that is very expressive with her, her media. And I, when you can get that kind of feeling going, you've got something going. And she, she has also uh, found a lot of success with that, being very expressive and 
very honest and sincere, and, and it shows a lot of emotion and so on. So congratulations in that respect. Plus, you have a nice composition. Where's Karen? OK. What's that? You are? Uh, you're underestimating yourself. I like this because, of course, I'm not up on uh, farm animals uh, as much as I, perhaps I should. And is, oh, is that a uh, rooster? Or, OK. And I would assume that uh, you have handled that a little bit different than what most roosters have been handled. And this is what I like about this, is that you go to a show and you see a barn painting, and it's almost like you see one barn, you've seen them all. And then you go in and see a figure, and say you've seen one figure, you've seen them all. And you walk into uh, a landscape, and you've seen one landscape, and you've seen them all. And uh, still life, you've seen this one, and you've seen them all. I haven't seen a painting like this, and I have to applaud you for that, and that's good. I mean, it, uh, to me, it's exciting to see the way that you came in and capitalized on the pose and so forth. The action, the composition, the arrangement, the way you played pieces and parts up and, and other parts down, I have to think that's very commendable. So I know that you're lying to me when you say that you're an amateur. So. Uh, very, very nice in that respect. Uh, I really enjoy the way you handle the watercolor, too, as far as, and I hope that, uh, and I'm not sure, I'm get missing up on all the names of the Karen, or uh, let's see, the one that we just had before, right. Aaron, is it? All right, Aaron. Uh, take close note of this one when you get up close, and here, because I want you to take note of this on the tail feathers. And uh, what we have in there would be a mixture of about three different colors, probably, at least. And they're all coming together from a distance. Now, from back there, you guys, it may not show that way. Up close, I can appreciate it in that fashion. And it's the same thing that's happening in through in the chest area. Uh, all these different colors coming together as one. So actually, I. Uh, I'm going to take a shot in the dark, and, and it's really, uh, I, I feel that it's very nice the way it is. In fact, I think I'm going to give you just food for thought again, but I don't know if uh, I'm always right. And in fact, I, I'm going to be right up front. When I do these educated guesses, it's like looking in a crystal ball and saying, what is going to happen if you do this? I don't always know, but I do feel that the only thought I would have given you would be you've gone into almost an abstract approach. Almost. And I would have liked to see you take it one more step into the abstract direction. And I would have liked to see you kind of lose this and this. And so that you don't go into this kind of detail. And so that this becomes really the focal point. So this is almost washed out, just gets lost in the shuffle. And uh, so that it becomes a, a secondary shape, a secondary part of the painting. But that would probably be the only thing that I would have considered doing to the piece. Everything else is handled beautifully. Very, very nice. No. <laughs> Keep it simple. <laughs> Okay, this is Judy's, and where's Judy? Okay, Judy. My favorite is the one on the left here. Not because of this color, because I've already just mentioned to Linda that I favor the monochromatic, the, the black and the white uh, photos and so forth. And, uh, but here with the, uh, the drawing versus the watercolor, I don't evaluate it by saying what uh, this is color, this is not, and so on. I base it as to what uh, it does to me as far as uh, overall feeling, impact, uh, composition, arrangement, and so forth. I feel 
This one is far more exciting because of the different layers, the way you've designed it, you've manipulated it and so forth in such a way it looks uh, uh, very creative. And uh, no matter what way you look at it, you can enjoy this piece any which way you'd place it. And you're enjoying it strictly for design, no matter what. I feel that if you did this one over here and flip things around, you wouldn't be concentrating on design. You're concentrating on putting a figure here and a figure there and a butterfly here and so on. It's nice because it becomes almost uh, like an illustration and that's fine. But that's why I say this is more of the fine arts approach. This is more of an illustrative type of approach. And there's nothing wrong with an illustration because that's exactly there, uh, what uh, illustration is all about. Okay. So that's why a lot of times we submit pieces into shows and such and we say, well, why didn't I get in? It's because sometimes it's not cut out to be that kind of artwork. Even though this has merit, uh, this is more into the fine art realm and it uh, is where it should be. Uh, the only thought I'd give you on this one would be perhaps you could even, in fact, even now still do it, just pull off a few little highlights. I feel that you, need, you almost started doing that, but I feel that you need your strongest light right in through here, your strongest contrast, your strongest darks. And right now, it's not happening. Not in the middle, but slightly offset, either there or over here. It's almost that you started doing it right in through here, but it's almost hitting uh, what we call a, a middle tone all the way through. And if you just got just a little more uh, contrast with the lights and the darks, that would help with the overall impact there. The uh, only other little thought I'm going to give you is the area that you've left, and this is uh, a vignette. And for some, some of the people ask me, what do I mean by the vignette? That means by the white that you've left around the painting. I feel that you could have, pro here, see, fortunately you went off the edge here. And had you gone off the edge, maybe right down in the lower um, uh, left-hand side, your eye won't take you around that shape like it's on a boat or something. And it will help keep the eye on. In fact, look at it now, if I, if I put my finger right there and put it here. It's that strong statement. So design that white area that is around the piece. Okay, we're gonna run short of time if I don't uh, speed it up. So we're gonna probably, unfortunately, if you have two, I'm gonna pick one and probably just expound on just that one. Speaking of vignette, Where's Frank? Frank, the only thing that I can see on this one uh, would be the vignetting that you have done right through here. It's such a strong statement going from here to here that if you can just kind of scumble that out, lift it off, or add something more down below it, somehow lose the contrast here, that would help, that would make all the difference in the world. Your technique is excellent. Uh, I'm not sure structurally if, it, uh, if the ear and this area read as, as strong as it uh, should. Perhaps maybe again just a little softer in the upper fur area. And again, so that, again it doesn't look as hard all the way around. You need to lose it in a few places and this would be one little spot that you could lose it in a, and definitely down in through here. This is the part that hit me first. Uh, the pink of the tongue. It's not bad, I don't mind the pink, but I'd like to see just a little bit of uh, the uh, sienna or ochre or something else tied into it. And uh, it just is too strong of a statement. And uh, it, it doesn't have as much harmony with the rest of the painting until you start to pull another color on top of it. Uh, nice job as far as your rendering is concerned. I love the way you handled the eyes, the fur, and uh, you're, you're definitely are under control with it, so I, I don't worry about what you're going to do elsewhere as far as pulling it back into, into, into uh, shape. So uh, that would probably be about it on that, Frank. Very nice, Frank. <coughs> Bob, how you doing? I like that. Again, a lot of expression there, a lot of feeling, a good mood, and it looks like you had a lot of fun doing it at the same time. And when you can get do that, you've got something going. 
The uh, same thing as I talked to Aaron about. That's the first thing I'm going to say. And of course, Aaron knew I was going to say that now, right? The green. And it's, it's uh, just as a, a quick little thought, same, the, the green is it's necessary. I mean, it's a chosen color right there because all the other colors, go, it goes well with. I would just play that down just a little bit. Uh, is that, what color what were you using there? I really don't know, it was pretty much out of the two. Yeah, you just throw another, you know, here you are look at everywhere else you've done it. Everywhere in the entire painting, you have intermixed that color. Or at least it's working with a subtle enough color in there, except for right there in that green. And even if you would use such a hard and harsh point of that green in places, that wouldn't hurt. In fact, that much of it isn't going to hurt. Look at that. That's nice. But to have it all the way through is, is just a little bit too strong of a statement there. Uh, I like the, the expressiveness that you have in here. I, I like the fact that you're not worrying about distortion. Uh, and especially, look at the way the hands are. It's so delicate. It's almost like an ET hand or something like this where it, it, it's smooth flowing and such. And uh, that's exactly what's happening here. It's a smooth flowing design all the way through. And uh, it's very noteworthy. The only uh, little thought, and this is minor, would be I would lose this hard edge in three here. I don't think you need that hard edge. Here you're losing it in places. And this area here isn't necessary as well. But that's minor. That's a very minor uh, part. I would say probably more than anything, it's, it's the green that is really the, the area that uh, needs attention. My favorite part, right in through here. Because again, that intermixture of color and going brush stroking with the plane directions, uh, letting the paint speak for itself, those brush strokes speaking for itself. Would you mind moving my name? I'd like to know what you think of the placement, generally speaking, of the flowers, even though they aren't finished. OK. Uh, the placement. Uh, is not a problem, I don't feel. I'd play perhaps some of it down yes. and as you're coming down in through here, especially the ones that you have down through here. And I think I would play the, uh, some of the outside perimeter of this one down. The, uh, the flowers don't bother me in that respect. The only thought I'm going to give you at this stage, and it's, it's so minor, but I do feel that it's uh, very similar. Bob's picking it out right now because uh, it was the very first thing I hit him with, and uh, it's right here. Now, that's, that's minor, but it's the fact that, in other words, you've got the figure almost, almost near center, and because of the way the arrangement is, you're able to get away with it. I think that's not a problem. But to do this is the wrong place. If you carry that off, look at it now, without that over there, your attention is going to go right to that figure more than this. And it's such a, a close uh, touch with the top part of the head that it causes a little bit of a problem there for you. Uh, I like the idea of the black and the black idea. I think that's are just super. And uh, so oftentimes you think, well, gee, you don't have that contrast. And that's what makes this so great is that loss of contrast, and it's really going to put a, so much emphasis on, on the figure. But you got to be careful of the flowers oh, yes. at the very Thank end. You. Right. Thank you. OK, very nice. Where are these coming from? I didn't see all these <laughs> over there. <laughs> Richard is, OK. Richard, where are you studying now, or where did you pick? Where did you pick up your background here? Uh huh. Oh, very nice. Very nice. And this is in your oil. Uh huh. 
Okay. I like the uh, idea of working with the real neutral backdrop uh, with the figures and so forth, and then really zeroing in on your, your subject at hand. The only thought I'm, I'm going to give you, and uh, design-wise, is the division coming right down through here. I, I feel that uh, somehow it could be a little less, in other words, if this, uh, if you could see a little bit of the structure underneath through here, it might help break that up. But right now, for some reason, it's almost dividing your, your painting right down the, uh, and it's not really in half, but it, it almost takes you in that fashion uh, all the way across. And because of that, it almost, it gives too strong of a separation between the two elements. And I think it will help tie the two together as far as your subject and, and the background. Uh, I'm glad to see that you block in the basic shapes to start with, and then you decide to come back in and develop it and, and model it. And I, and I can see it at this working stage here, working very, very nicely. Uh, and last, I don't know if I would even necessarily show this division line right through here. I don't know if that is even necessary. I feel that uh, if that had been played up higher, it might have worked, but it's coming so close to the center, I think that you could probably almost just lose it in the shuffle. It is so mystified that you really don't see any definite uh, point as far as where the two meet. It also causes a little bit of a problem running right in through here at the same time. So the less you get with this division right through here is going to be helpful. And uh, That uh, might be about all I'm going to give you at this stage of the game, because otherwise we, we might, and I would, if you, I don't know what our situation is. Uh, if anyone has any additional questions after we're done with this, I'll try to get as many as we can while, while everyone is tearing things down. But I know that we're, time, we're uh, fighting time here. That's uh, very nice, and I assume that you're going to probably develop your hand further yet at this stage. I, I realize you're in this working stage. Uh, the only thought I'm going to give you is uh, just a quick one, is the red. It's such a nice red. Why not a dot of it somewhere, maybe here? I'm not even sure if it's necessary, but it could even possibly work somewhere in the backdrop even as a, just a lone ranger somehow back there. But most definitely, I would come back up and through here with some stronger uh, touches of the reds just again for the purpose of harmony, instead of just pulling it right on down to the lower uh, extremes. Okay, very nice, Richard. Where are you from, Richard? I live in Oh. Kathy, I recognize this place. Stonington, very nice. A lot of uh, feeling here, too. A lot of feeling. I feel that uh, you've got the composition nicely uh, placed here as far as uh, the arrangement and pattern and so forth. The only thought I'm going to give you is if you could possibly go back and, and just spray it a little bit and work a little wetter in the distant area right through here. Now I'm going to crop it big time because I want to show you what a beautiful painting you have going down here. And I'm not saying that that's where you need to crop it, in no way. I feel what you have is superb. But I want you to see this piece right here. Now, what a strong painting that makes right there. And now, look at this. With this, it's fine, but let it just kind of get lost in the shuffle. And let it almost become mystical or something like this. Everything else is almost mystical in the way you're blending this. I don't know if that's really necessary back in through here. Work with these shapes that you have down in through here. These, the boats, are a little too strong. It's jumping out too, too strong for you this way. They're off in the distance, they're on the water and so on. You can just play those down. Just lift them off a little bit. And uh, this is gorgeous. Beautiful layering of color and uh, Again, another real expressive piece. 
dynamic in, in that re respect. Uh, that's about it. I'm gonna have to cut it short otherwise. We've got about three minutes, is that right, Homer? Three minutes. Huh? Okay. Am I wrong on that? What, how much time do I have, Sharon? Okay. Bernice. I like both of them, but I, I feel my favorite is the one on the right. And I like the vignette. Speaking of vignettes, both vignettes are very, very nice. I do feel there's, uh, my, even though this is my favorite, there's two things that I would do. One, I'm going to crop this. What else would know? I'm going to crop it so that your eye isn't going to take you that far over here. I feel that your shape all the way around, see your shape right in through here, versus this. See the difference? Your eye now takes you right in. Here it goes all the way around. And next is this line all the way across is not necessary. Let it get lost. Let, you know, just a few little spots and or even raise it up, raise the bricks up just a little bit higher back and through here somehow. But right now you're just dividing that all the way across there. This is, other than that, that's, that's all you'd have to do on that. You might want to step up your values just a further, a little bit further in uh, this part of the flower. But what a beautiful uh, piece that is. Very transparent, again, uh, just very typical of a, a very transparent watercolor. Uh, very fresh. Nice job as far as negative painting. Boy, you've picked that up so nicely. And uh, with the underglazes of color or overglazes either way, very exciting piece. The same problem here exists is the outside perimeter. Again, if you look at this without that outside perimeter, you're going to look at that entirely differently. Look at this. Look at that versus going here. You don't need this. That parallels it. Come off here. Let it go off the edge. This is a nice vignette here, but this is causing you the problem more than anything. Okay. Are we, we all of a sudden have an extension here? Yeah. Let's go and talk to each other. Okay. Where's Pat? Okay, Pat. You're going to be cropping on this one? Or not thought of, or what do we have? Huh? Let me just give you, uh, out of curiosity, I, I really don't know what the rest of it's going to be shooting for, but what would you think of actually taking that off the page right there? Again, that is such a strong area here. It's almost like an arrow that's going to point you up out of the page there. Look at it now. Your eye is going to take you right in here where it's supposed to be. Look at it now. And there. And believe it or not, you don't need all of this because you've divided it in half because you're coming here and here. Now, this next good point is that this uh, exemplifies what the old time watercolors used to do all the time. In fact, this is the way I used to uh, paint, was develop a, a Davies Gray buildup all the way through and then layer color on top of that, if that be the case. You build up structure and that's what you've done and then it's up to you. Do you want to go to a little more color and if that is the case, then you just layer the color accordingly on top. And I like that approach because you're really putting a lot of emphasis on, on the structural part of it and that's what you're dealing with. And it really plays up the light and dark patterns that you have in there. I like the perspective of it. I like the, the way that uh, you're working with the design of the perspective. I, I feel that with this cropped accordingly, I, I like that best. Naturally, I still feel that you need to step up your values on this. I'd say you're about halfway there, value-wise. If you put up a value scale and say, that's my halfway point, where would be my darkest dark, increase whatever you have, twice that, and that's where you should be.
this one here I feel is uh, noteworthy, except if I feel like you need another object or something. It's almost like you have this and you have this. It would have been nice to throw some other object in through here. I feel that leaving this alone would have been fine. You don't need anything more here. All you would need to do is to build up a little more definition or a little more strength as far as either another object or carry this theme up further. Let it overlap more. Right now you haven't got a strong enough overlap. You have a touch here, you have a touch here, but it's not enough and it kind of splits the painting in, in two in that fashion. Uh, and I really do like the way that you handle this. This is with maskoid, I'm sure, probably. No? Whoa. Very nice. <laughs> Shows you what I know. Shows you what I can do. But point is, is that I was going to say, if, that, if you did use maskoid, you uh, really handled it in such a way it doesn't appear hard-edged. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> that's, uh, that <laughs> no, that, that was what I was going to say, really. <laughs> but uh, at any rate, uh, I do like the way that you have worked with the light and dark patterns, and especially that's what makes this so nice, is that she has some different layers of light and dark in here, and it uh, doesn't look so hard all the way through the same. Okay. I think that's about it on that one. Mrs. Anonymous. Okay. This has uh, got a lot of uh, feeling to it. I like the, uh, the mood that is being established here. I'm going to give just a few little suggestions, very minor little suggestions. I like this part, especially from down here. I'm talking about this. This really sets the mood right there. That part of the painting, this part in here, this fusion, this fusion. This goes back to the lost and found, the lost and found. We need to do more of this lost and found. Uh, I think it really adds so much more excitement to, to a painting. And uh, I'm going to design this just a little differently. And I would say, if I would take a shadow, and I don't know if it's even possible, but it's irrelevant if it's possible or not. The light source is coming in such a way, instead of just having this light, I would angle it a slight bit. It's going to create far more interest. Instead of this line, this line, this line, this line, this line, angle it just a little bit and down, perhaps. Or just even straight down, just a little bit. Somehow, just angle that shadow. A shadow. Oh, from the overhang up here would help. And making this one a little wider, this one over here. And again, at the same time, you get a little more lost and found. This door or window area would get lost in the shuffle because you're going to lessen the contrast with that. And last little thought is that this line coming all the way down, if you had changed the perspective and or you could leave it that way and just show a little bit of a suggestion of the roof, a little bit stronger than what you have, or change the angle so that it's not running straight down evenly right through the way there. You've done it here, but you haven't done it here. And so even though I realize that it could end up being you caught, you're caught in that uh, situation where this is so foreshortened that you don't see it as much as this, you're getting distortion to this roof, you could get distortion to that roof. Again, just again for the sake of composition would be helpful. Last, even though I like this very much, Offsetting it so it doesn't run straight across, just a little higher in a few little spots would help, again, add that much more interest to it. Last, a little bit of the brown on the end of the blue. Just a little bit, a touch of the brown into the blue would help add, again, another dimension for you. Uh, very moody, very, uh, very, very nice piece. So whoever, I should uh, applaud uh, their efforts here. Where is Roger? Very nice, Roger. I'm going to have to get my glasses on for this one. Okay, my favorite, Roger, is the one over here to the right. And if you were to ask me why, I would say probably because you need to play down 
a few of the keys so that I know where my center of interest is. They all are treated exactly the same. And that little touch of that sparkle, which is hard to, to detect from back there, you'd have to see it up here, becomes a little too commercialized as far as the, the radiate, radiating uh, light that you have bouncing off of that. If you could just softly blend that out and so instead of coming in and make it, making it almost uh, uh, illustrative or uh, stylized or whatever the word would be, if you could just kind of let it be a little more natural as far as the, the glow is concerned. I like the idea. I think the idea is sensational. Dealing with such a simple thing as keys, and I think that you have to be applauded for that. And it's the same thing over here. I, th I like both ideas. I think I like the way you think on this. In fact, it's so original. In fact, this uh, is exactly what I was saying. Draw things that you can see, and you can make such a, an interesting piece out of such just about anything. It depends on how you compose it, depends on how you paint it, and so forth. So this is very commendable. Again, a lot of lost and dark or lost and found areas, and again, such subtle value changes in there. A real moody piece, and I like I like that feeling. Same thing here. I like the way that you're working with the drapery back and through here, the light patterns and such. Uh, media wise, what do we have here, by the way? What Watercolor on what? On paper. Very, very nice, Roger. Uh, the only suggestion I'm going to give you on this one is to play down some of the parts of your weeds and such over here so that, again, same thing as I said over here. Each key was handled exactly the same. It's probably easier for me to show it to you on this one, though, than I, you can on the keys, because from back there, you can't see it. But if he would play down and play up a few of the lights here and play down a few of the uh, ends, it's going to, in other words, each one isn't going to be the same light and dark. Each one isn't going to be the same color as the other. And you just have to have a little bit. It's, it's like what you did here with the, with the backdrop. Can you imagine if you had kept this value all the way across the same? No, you changed that very nicely. And it's the same thing here you're dealing with on, on the other pieces and parts of the painting. You're playing some things up and you're playing certain things down. But on the subjects themselves, it's the same thing. Uh, it's a nice, nice effect. It's very dramatic and it has a lot of impact. It's one of those type of paintings you're going to remember. And that goes back to what I talked about earlier. And that me makes this a showpiece because of that. So congratulations in that respect. OK, my favorite's the one on the left. And uh, I like the idea. I like the way it's composed. Uh, I, th I feel that um, this is, I would say, about 70% complete. I'd like to see it carried up a lot further value-wise. In fact, I would even have to maybe even say a little less than that. It's probably about 50% complete. but. Time-wise, it's like about 80% complete. It only needs a little more uh, value uh, input to get a little more contrast. It goes back to the same thing we just got done talking to Roger about as far as playing up certain figures. Each one is exactly played up the same way. And so I would say, as an example, let's put the emphasis right in here. And let's play some of this down and play this up a little bit. Let's play this church down and let this be light. So this is fine over here, but this having this much value and change and such is not necessary. What about some shadows that are going to be projected across from the figures themselves? And what about the people behind here? Maybe they're projecting a shadow and or possibly even cropping a little bit from that uh, bottom section. But this really has a lot going for it. I, I feel this has got a 
a lot of potential. I like the way it's handled, and I like this part of the painting in here. This is probably my favorite of the entire area. And I hate to do this because a lot of times people say, well, the rest of it isn't good. But it is. The whole thing is good. But if you can go to school on that, on how you're getting impact there. Look at the impact there. You know where your eye's traveling to. But now, look at it here. We don't know which one and which place to go to, but right up here, it's so simple to do that. So uh, take, take a part of this and say, gee, why, why is that white this strong and uh, do we really want it that way? This reads okay. This is fine in through here. This is not. This is not uh, where you want it to be. This, this shape is coming forward. So it's a matter of getting back and looking at it and saying, well, let's tone this area down and pull the sleeve out. And let's tone down this face and play this face up. And even though you're saying, well, the light's coming in and we have this bright color here, all your attention now is coming over here where it shouldn't be. So uh, this has got really everything going for it. It's just a matter of pulling some of these things together. I wish I could ask the light source, because if you, you could readjust the light source in any which way you'd want, uh, because the way that you've played up the light over in here, you could actually have it any which way, but you could also project some shadows coming across this area back and through here to lay the ground down. Back? Okay. That's, uh, it's nice to, to see what you've done, though. Really, it's a very, very nice piece. This one here, I'm going to cut you short on because of the fact I, I, I want to uh, get done with this when we have a few others to go. So I, I'm going to just say the, the thing that you need to do on this one would probably be project a shadow from this basket over here. You don't want, I'm going to stand over here. If you look at it now, again, so this becomes the focal point. Right now, this basket is carrying too much weight all the way across. But if you play the sh uh, this part of the basket down to the far right with a shadow, your eye is going to be taking you over here. Right now, it's causing a problem for you. Okay, Charlotte, you're working with a lot of things, and it's a tough thing to do when you're working with a lot of elements like this, but that's a great challenge to, to work with and to do, and I, I have to applaud you for the way you've handled this. Again, I'm going to be repetitive, because I, I, I know I've said this time and time and time and time again, and you've heard me say this so often tonight, but value-wise, which item is going to be the for, which one is going to be the, the uh, center of interest? Yeah, I realize what you're trying to do design-wise, probably right in through here. But really, color-wise, value-wise, this isn't reading as strong as anything else, and it should be. And so you need to start to step up your values on, on the center of interest and then work your way out. And it's the same thing here, is that each item is carrying exactly the same amount of weight. Execution-wise, the way you're layering the colors, it's fresh, it's, it's, uh, it's nicely done. So the execution of it is not a concern. The execution here is not a concern. The stripe here is a little bit of flat. I feel that, that uh, you need a shadow from, your, uh, uh, from some of the objects running across that uh, stripe. And uh, the other stripes are reading very nicely. It's just this little area right in through here that's causing a little bit of a problem for you. And again, I don't know if it's necessary to show that top. You could actually cut right on down to the top, maybe, or maybe you need a little more space up there. I most definitely would cut off the right-hand side of that dish because your eye, again, is traveling all the way around. You don't need that as a target area. And anytime you're working with a circle, bingo, it's a target. And it, uh, it causes grave problems. You might even want to crop in as far as that. It's hard to say exactly, but I most definitely would crop on the, on the right-hand side. I'd also crop over here on this particular side. How much? Homer says we're done. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, thank you for being so patient. <laughs>